Hello, I'm Tom, and this is Around the House with Kay and Tom, and thank you very much for watching my video. Today, I know this is not everybody's favorite, and some people probably have never eaten it or won't ever eat it, but a lot of us people, we love these uh, chicken gizzards. And so, a lot of people say, well, I can't eat them because they're too tough, and I just don't want to mess with them and all this stuff. Well, we're going to show you an easy way to do it today, and the Ninja Foodie, of course, and... You'll like them this way, I really do believe. So stay tuned and we'll get started with them. First thing we're going to do is put them in this bowl right here and start to wash them. Now if you don't want to or you don't have any gloves, make sure you wash your hands several times before you start uh, handling raw meat like this. And I still don't see how you can get all the the uh, dirt out from underneath your fingernails and everywhere else. Now they just said on the label that it was uh, gizzards and hearts and so there you see some of the hearts in here too. So now we're going to start to wash them off. I don't like these. I want to show you a little something about this uh, Purdue chicken here. It says 100% uh, vegetarian fed and uh, I can't read this without my glasses. And uh, raised cage free, no animal byproducts, and uh, no antibiotics. And this last one here is no steroids. And all this is on that label, so I'd imagine if that's on that label, it's probably pretty much being true. So let's go to the next step. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is put. Uh, around two cups of water in this uh, Ninja Foodie here. And then I'm going to take these gizzards and dump them right down in this uh, crisper basket here. Now, for me, I don't particularly care for the hearts, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the hearts out of here before I put them in the Ninja Foodie, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, crisper basket here and set it right down in there and that two cups of water. Now the water is not up on the, the gizzard or anything, it's down below, it's down below all that. I don't know if I can get it where you can see it or not, but those, the water is not touching those. So then the next thing we're going to do, okay, now I've got my pressure lid here and you want to make sure you turn the valve to seal which is over to the left like that. Now you put it on top of your ninja booty. Turn it clockwise until it locks into place. Make sure the valve's over here is turned to seal. And then we're going to turn on the power and we'll go hit the pressure button and we'll leave it on high and the time is going to be 15 minutes. And then we'll hit the start button. And there it goes. Now it's going to take about between 5 and 7 to maybe 8 or 9 minutes for this thing to build up pressure. And it has to build up pressure before it can start uh, counting down for the cook. And so in the meantime, while y'all are waiting to see, watch those little lights go around for 15, 20 minutes here, how about joining my channel and giving me a thumbs up? I sure would appreciate it. And while you're waiting, it's always a good idea to disinfect your countertop and clean it. Especially if like you've had chicken or something like that on it, working with it. Even though the, I don't think any of my gizzards touch this up here, I still want to clean it down. Because I know the, the wrapper and all did touch it. So you spray it down a lot, all pretty good here. And then actually it says to, on the can here, so it says wait, you know, three or four or five minutes before you wipe it down. I hardly ever have that much time unless I'm completely finished with everything. Then sometimes I do it, but otherwise, go ahead and wipe it off. Clean it down real good. That's just a suggestion for something to do for you to do while you're waiting for the for the uh, pressure cooker to start. 
So. Okay, now when these things finish uh, pressure cooking, I'm going to take me and uh, put some uh, Lowry's all purpose chicken seasoning on them. And I'm going to put some breadcrumbs on these bad boys. And then when they're finished, I'm going to top them off with some Frank's Red Hot Original. And so now about I got somebody's attention. You're talking about hot gizzards here. <laughs> Okay, now the red button just had popped up just as I was finishing telling you about the red hot, the Frank's red hot over there. And so now the little lines are still chasing each other around there just a little bit. And it usually takes a couple of minutes for them to uh, start counting down after the, uh, after the, uh, it builds up pressure. So it'll be just another minute or two and they'll start counting down. And there they go. Now we got 14.54 to go. <laughs> so we'll be back in a minute. Okay, now we're down less than 10 seconds on this pressure cook here <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick release on it when it's finished and there it says done oh it completely gets done and that's gonna say this little button down here will illuminate say keep warm and so we're gonna move over here and we'll come back here and hit the quick release button and let all that steam out Okay, it's now it's been almost two and a half minutes since I hit the quick release, so the pin should be dropping pretty soon here. And there it went. It took about three and a half minutes for it to count down all the way, or go down far enough for that uh, button to drop. So now let's get the top off. Okay, now everybody's heard me say a lot of times when you open this, turn it counterclockwise. Turn it away from your face. Like that. Oh, those are some good looking gizzards. Let's see, down in this pot. Hey, if you like gizzards, that's some good looking gizzards. So now our next step is, we'll get these out of here and put them in this bowl over here. And then when I do that, I'm going to empty this uh, pot here, which is hot, hot, hot. So don't touch it with your hands. And so let me get started doing that. Okay, now this little basket, this air fryer crisper basket here, it gets cool pretty quick on these handles. So you can handle this. It's only been about five minutes. So I just emptied the pot. And uh, it's about to dump them all on the floor right then. I just emptied the pot and wiped it out. And there you can see my gizzards I got down in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe this uh, basket out here and we'll be back. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dump, dump these uh, breadcrumbs in here. I got almost a cup. I'm just going to dump her on top of it. The next thing, I'm going to take my Lowry's all-purpose chicken here and get all over that. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of this and put it in there because this is not for everybody but if I put just a little bit in there I can get by with it and then after, uh, after we cook it then you can put some more on it. Okay. Like I say, we can always put more on it. I know that's not near enough for most people. Now we're going to shake them around like I like to do with the, a lot of my things here to get them ready and raw breaded and everything. And that's going good, good, good. Now 
you might say you don't like gizzards, but now you've never had anything like this, so you're not really sure. I think a heart snuck back in there by mistake. So now let's get ready to put them back in the air crisper. Okay, now I'm just going to place these down in here one at a time because I don't want to shake all that goodness off of them. A little bit stayed on. Now I've done that, I'm going to shut the lid on this. Uh, Ninja Foodie here. I'm going to turn on the power. And then we'll hit the uh, air crisp button. We'll leave it at 390 and we'll drop it down to temperature, I mean the time to 10 minutes and then we'll hit the start button. And I might check just a little bit ahead of time to make sure they're not getting overcooked, but I don't think it'll take no more than 10 minutes, so we'll be back in a second. Okay, now they're down less than three minutes. I want to take a look at them. Oh boy, those look so good. Let me see if I can get you over here. Huh, yeah, they do. I don't think I'm going to cook these anymore. Now, this is just a little plastic fork. Goes right through that gizzard. Now, whenever you have a gizzard that you can put plastic forks through. Out of Claire, those are some tender gizzards. Let me get over here where I can show them to you better. Now, I don't eat a lot of hot spicy foods. Well, let me tell you, that, that uh, Frank's Red Hot Original there that I poured in there a while ago, to me, that's just enough to, to make a little sweat pop out along, <laughs> along my forehead. Because <laughs> I tasted one of these already. I said, I knew that it was done. <laughs> hmm. Well, I had to turn it off while I kept on eating and swallowed there. But I declare. You've never had a gizzard to taste that good or be that tender before. I don't believe there's no, any way you could have unless you cooked them about the way I cooked them. Mm, I can't imagine anybody doing exactly what I did to them. But they are so good and tender. You wouldn't believe it. So if you, if you know you like gizzards, I'll stop again. Okay, now if you think you might like a gizzard, or if you know you like gizzards, you'll love these gizzards even better. And if you think you might like to try one sometime, try one of these and you'll make them part of your diet. Because these are, like I said, these are these taste just enough like gizzards to know you got a gizzard. And outside that they taste completely different like something else that is really great. So anyway, till next time. Hope you enjoyed my little video. I hope to make another one for you real soon. And if you can, give me a thumbs up and join my channel. And thanks again for watching. It means a lot to me. So until I see you next time, y'all have a real good day now. Goodbye.